I think I have a special little box here. It's supposed to be helping me for passing the slides. I hope Felix did a good job. I will try that. Yes, uh, we, the two former speakers talked, introduced very much the issue of impact of all these standards. Uh, we've seen experience in the UK and we've seen uh, in Sweden and the real picture is not as easy as it may look from here between specialists, right? So we have a real issue of communication. Um, standards are good ways to uh, push a large market, a European market, and professionals to address the light. It's, it may work, as we've seen, it may, they may, there are some difficulties. So for daylighting, uh, we could have used a, a standard like the Pantheon of Rome, as you know, which is the 1% uh, standard uh, daylight. You know, inside we could say we could use the Pantheon as a unit, one Pantheon, two Pantheon, three Pantheon. It could have been a, a direction, but we didn't go into this. Uh, actually, we went into, uh, uh, I actually, I was proposed to uh, uh, run and uh, to be the convener of this program, which actually started before me, and uh, a lot of uh, participants are in this room, so uh, it's very important to know that at least 50% of the contributors are in this room. Uh, when I was proposed in 2014, which is about uh, one year ago, uh, I mentioned that I'd be interested, very interested to do that, but the issue is not time. I think in one year we could do something. The knowledge is here. I mean, there's no problem of knowledge. We have the data, we have the tools, we have everything. The problem is more uh, strategy, tactics, and the difficulty of being uh, 20 European countries or more agreeing. That's the major difficulty, right? So the issues was to address the uh, minimum provision of daylight in spaces, not in buildings. We talk about spaces. Uh, the clearly desire was to link with climatic data, not to go to very simplified approach, uh, to be able to link to that, to provide adjustment for European climates, and also to include also a very important issues such as view, sunlight, glare from window. Uh, it should be applicable, applicable to all spaces, so n without limitation of shape, so we should not be concerned by the shoe box or rectangle or whatever constraint. It should be absolutely for every type of space. So this uh, 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 project was reactivated in 2014 uh, during the Istanbul meeting of the Sen. Uh, this is a list with about a bit more than 20 uh, contributors, 25 contributors from different countries, and I thank them again. Very uh, impressive work which has been done. So when you do that, you present to the technical committee TC169 in lighting, in Brussels, not in Brussels, but the European Commission, the project. What is your scope? Uh, you need people to vote and validate the scope. So this was the scope. And it's very important to read its politics now. We don't talk about technology, we talk about politics. It's minimum recommendation for achieving, by means of natural light, an adequate subjective impression of lightness indoors. You will see why it's, we wrote that. And for providing an adequate view out. In addition, recommendations for the duration of sunshine exposure with habitable and occupied rooms are given. The standard gives information on how to use the lighting to provide lighting with interiors and how to limit glare. And here, that's a very, very important point. We are in a trap where the TC169, I can say that, is mainly in the hand of the electric lighting industry of Europe. And for these people, sorry for the, those in this room, daylighting is this kind of little uh, function we need to control the lighting controls, uh, to calculate the energy savings, to do all that stuff. I'm sorry. Uh, the daylighting standards doesn't need electric lighting technology. The issue is to propose sound, good, delete buildings. And we could have done that one, one century ago, two centuries ago, whatever. So that's the first trap. And this is why there are two other groups working on the lighting of workplaces with very specific requirements for illuminances, and another one dealing with energy performance of building. And one of the challenges was to get away, our hands away from these people, which I respect very much, but the task is to define this requirement. And we fall into linking daylighting specification to specific requirement, we're dead. We fall into the strategy of energy conservation 
and a simulation for each point regarding the application. So here we took some independence, and that was a very important move. So the draft, which has been published, we, it's there, it has been sent. This is the content, and uh, I'd be very happy to discuss the content. But basically, we knew, and it was very difficult to define minimum quantities, and one of the reasons is because we're in Europe, and as you know in Europe, you have already local regulations, local standards, and it was impossible, really easily, to agree on quantities. So we say, let's not talk about quantities, let's talk about the methods, the vocabulary, the metrics. So we have a normative part with no minimum recommendations, just uh, daylight minimum, the way to describe daylight provision, the way to describe minimum view out, exposure to sunlight, whatever. This is the standard, there's no quantities, just the, the, the method. And then we have annexes, and annex A is very important annex, actually, it's the one which figures the minimum quantities. And it's not a standard, because it's difficult. Some countries say, hey, no, I want a bit more, I want a bit less, and it's impossible. And then we have the back information behind this calculation. Everything is explained in annexes, right? So if I take the normative approach, the idea is let's not talk about daylight factor. Daylight factor is a method. What we want is illuminance in buildings. So let's go back to the we want illuminances, which are exceeded for a fraction of the area in the space for more than half the daylight hours. Oh, that's very important. We move to a half of the daylight hours. We don't care about schedules of use, because again, if you talk about schedule of use, you're concerned by the use, the uh, operation, the saving electricity. When you design glazing like that, you don't care very much about the schedule. It's, it's part of the architecture, right? However, half of the time of daylight hours was found, and we referred to some work early de developed at the CIE, actually, when we uh, wrote that, there's a given illuminance, and if you have at least 50% of the time, the billing is well delit, it's stimulating, we have something of interest. So you see, this is something we could have an agreement between uh, among uh, 25 or more uh, experts. But at the same time, as you know, when you have a building, especially when it's lit from windows, you have the dark area of the room. And the dark far area of the room far away needs a minimum of light. So we have the absolute minimum of illuminance all over the place and a more significant quantity of light for the area which is being used. For roof light, it's a bit different because in the industry, in supermarkets, whatever, you need light everywhere. So a space under roof lights, uh, we talk about a criteria uh, over 100% of the area, not only 50%. Uh, we have also a recommendation for describe the view based on the content. Uh, you could see the ground, the landscape, or the sky. So at least uh, one of these criteria should be uh, the landscape layer should be the minimum to be offered. And then we have minimum angle for site angle. We have the minimum distance to the outside element. If you have a facade a few meters away from the window, it doesn't work. And we have also the minimum dimension of the view window. So I go quickly into the uh, sunlight, also uh, minimum hours for a, speak, uh, uh, a given day. And we have also the glare protection based on the daylight glare probability with also uh, not exceed a maximum value for a given percent of the time, right? And the major strategy was in this appendix to promote the minimum, but the danger when you make a standard, if you make a, a minimum, maybe everybody will sh consider that the minimum is the objective and the quality. So very carefully we divide as in the Leeds or Braham, uh, labeling uh, three levels. So we have the minimum, and then we have medium performances and high performance, right? So and then we comes to the appendix with minimum recommendation. Well, here this time, with, for facade window, we're talking about 300 lux should be exceeded for 50% of the space, more than half uh, uh, of the delight hours of the year. And we get the other values, 100 lux, and so on. So I understand that we have to move quickly to the discussions, so I can't 
describe everything. The document is being circulated, so you will have access through your national standard for uh, reviewing it. And it's very important that we, we have blocked the input for any other participant in the document now. We go to the public inquiry for the next month. It will be sent in October. And the National uh, Standard Committee will be invited to, to collect comments and suggestions. So all these comments and suggestions would be uh, uh, appreciated, of course. I hope it will be done. And we will try to integrate this in the update of this standard. So I don't want to show all this. I have uh, all this on slide, but you have the document will be accessible very shortly. So uh, I really welcome all these people here uh, to uh, read it and uh, make some useful comments. Thank you very much.